Riding around in the desert with leather jacket and a sweater Then pro call said he losing his mind and he need a medic Said no sweat as I turned up the heater in my new Jetta Went back to the crib and grabbed a Beretta Picked up some medical 12 pack of Modelo A trash bag and a shovel A dumbbell made of metal A wig, glasses, a fake beard Massive as Eric Weddles A bottle of Jose Cuervo I left the gloves at the crib So I went back to the desert And thought I could use me some hot talk all right, folks, so here it is. We're back at it again, Adventures with the Black Nerds. You have me, Baron J67. And I'm XT Jones. And then... And hi, this is... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, man. Oh, yeah, hey, this is Eduardo Hernandez, the esports director for NCGA, the National College Gaming Association. So this is actually really huge for us because this is our first interview. It's something we've always talked about. And for our fans and our listeners, we always want to make sure we're stepping it up and we're giving better content, uh, better, just overall, we're progressing. That's something we always push for. And this is a positive step towards that direction of just pushing forward. So uh, go ahead, Trev. Yeah, so... uh how did you end up getting into esports? I know we before we sp- before we started the, the actual interview, we did you did mention that you recently got into it about a couple years ago. So how were you introduced to esports? Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, me, I grew up with video games, right? My parents worked, etc. I was left at home with my N sixty four, GameCube, PS two, you name it, you know. And growing up, you know, I I've always loved video games, right? But like, your parents always told you, you know, you can't do anything in video games, right? And yeah. I mean, up to about a year ago, you know, I always thought that was the case. And then uh, my favorite game now, League of Legends, like, you know, I always see like the pro scene and all of that. But like, literally, yes. like almost every month, they're doing their best to make sure that like esports competitively is a growing thing. Not just for like the select amount that are already there, but for like aspiring college players, high school players, man, even middle school players are starting to push into, man. So. I found out about this just by entering into this local tournament uh, here in Iowa City, Iowa, where I'm from. Um, it was called NCGA, the, the tournament organizer. You know, it sounded real fun, you know, the way they marketed it, you know, like, come play for some cash, have some fun. And uh, they had some, like, shoutcasters and stuff, like commentators that would, like, do hype plays while we played. And I, I just loved it, you know. I just, I didn't think I could, you know, even even though it's, like, 30 bucks, you know, for first place, you know, it, it's still, like, hey, I can win some money, you know, just for playing games. And that's basically how I got into it. Okay, and uh, you you did mention NCGA. Now you're the actual the director of NCGA. Is that correct? Yep, the esports director here now. All uh, right. So now, what is for our listeners? What exactly is the National College Gaming Association? What we are, in short, we're a tournament organizer. What we aspire to be is to be the premier tournament league across the United States. What we really want to do is help high school players know that esports can be a potential career you know for basketball you know kids play high school ball then they go to college and they go to pro you know that's how it's done for esports it's really there's nothing tangible there yet there's no bridge away and we're trying to become the bridge way for that you know we're trying to get players to join our tournaments play in win some prizes show their parents that they can win money and then help them get better to the point of like pushing it into like playing on a, a collegiate league team and then eventually into the pro scene. Okay. Okay. Now, go ahead, B. Now, my next question after hearing that, because that's that's amazing. I think that's the most beautiful thing ever. Because we, like you said, we always hear, uh, "You're wasting your time." You know, right. uh, you hear stories about players who had to lie to their parents in order to go to tournaments and whatnot. <laughs> Um, so now my next question is, because you brought up the collegiate, um, well, of course, it's National College Gaming Association. How do you avoid messing with people's rookie status? In terms of like. In terms of, yeah. OK, because once um, one, let's say esports mm-hmm. gets to that pinnacle point right, right, and it's right, right. D1. Right. Now, are you messing with NCAA? I see what you mean. Now that you bring that up, NCAA ways actually having issues getting into esports because the way they usually run things with basketball and other sports cannot be applied to video games due to certain laws and restrictions Mm. so the way we run things is to make sure we don't mess into those guidelines or stuff like that um things that we personally know since we're gamers whereas the ncaa they're used to traditional sports you know not esports so Mm. they're having difficulties getting into esports oh okay so 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 make sure very carefully to not you know get into that uh, gray area Nice. So you guys really are 
making sure you're going to become the bridge. Exactly. Yeah, that that's dope. That's dope because you know that's something we we thought of, we thought about. You know, because in esports that you play for a prize pool or right. for a spot for a spot inside of a big tournament or yeah. you know some people some some actual uh, titles do like uh, leagues they have their own leagues yeah. things like that so you know that was a concern for us this is what we were th- this is one of the main questions we wanted to to bring up uh now i did you did mention uh you know for high school students getting ready to come into college does that um is this I know we're not um we're not at the at like you guys said right. it's hard for NCAA to get into what is hap- get into esports now is will this what, what is it what do you how do you guys market to college students that this is a potential route to go hmm. um well a lot of college students already are familiar within their own university clubs of their collegiate league team um, each collegiate league team participates in something called the CSO that's run through or given the okay by Riot Games, which is the uh, board behind um, League of Legends. Okay. Uh, now, that's for the top, top schools. Usually, usually it's only about like 30 teams or 32 teams that actually make it to the final tournament. Before that, there's like the preliminary, which, you know, most of them don't make it. They get uh, weeded out through. Um, how we appeal to them, even even those teams that go to, the, you know, the big time tournament, you know, the one million dollar tournament, etc. Um, how we appeal to them is, right now they like to use our tournaments to you know test out their teams to see which is you know the the A team they're gonna bring to that. Um, if not, they also like field their B team in our tournaments because you know they don't quite make it on the A team for the CSL. And we also uh, uh, cater to individual players in colleges that, you know, they're trying to look into getting into the esports, but their college is just too small and can't compete with these other big colleges, so they don't have the platform to. Um, show their skills on the CSL stage because usually the smaller schools don't have high-elo players and there might be only like one or two high-elo players at the small schools so what we do is we enter them in our tournaments with like some other high-elo players of other small tournaments to get them um, some reputation you know okay now uh, is there is there a specific requirement are you like required to be a member of a college to participate in a, a tournament held by uh, NCGA we have specific tournaments that are co- catered only to university students, but we also have some other ones that are open to anyone. Okay, so you guys are now. Can a like a pro team in your local area join to compete in a competition like that? A semi-pro team, yes. A pro team. I mean, to be honest, you know, they're going to be looking at the bigger tournaments. Which, yeah. Unfortunately, for them now, just just because a uh, riot recently changed the. Um, because they have the LCS, which is the Premier Tournament Championship Series. Okay. And they had something called the Challenger Series, which is the second one. It's kind of like um, the B-League for, like, uh, you know, traditional sports. That's what it is. Okay. Now, this B-League was open to any pro team across the country. You know, you if you play through, like, some preliminaries, you can get into this big B-League. And you have a potential shot at making it to the Premier Championship. But just recently, uh, Riot games franchise league of legends so now there's the a league you know the premier league and there's an academy league so now no longer can pro teams you know aspiring pro teams get into the lcs so now they're they're basically out of competitions uh-huh. so now we're going to start looking into providing competition for them to get them some reputation because although they can't get into the lcs anymore riot has said that in years to come if there's any Team showing great potential, or etc. They'll expand their ten uh, chosen teams in the LCS to possibly more and incorporate more, you know, um, pro teams of potential. Now, with with that being said, did they eliminate regulation? Regulation over what? Uh, oh, oh, relegation, relegation. I'm yeah, sorry. Relegation. I'm yeah, so yeah, sorry. Yeah, relegation. Oh yeah, relegation is gone because, for example, um, you guys are familiar with TSM. Yes. Okay, so TSM has a team in the LCS. And then they have a academy TSM team now in the academy league. So they can't get relegated anymore. Franchising has made it so the teams in the LCS now, the 10 teams there, they will not get relegated. So wow. now what that what that helped uh, them with is that now they can get 
long time sponsors lock in more money etc you know because there's com- there's safety for them there's now no for relegation. now for people such as i who don't know what relegation is in terms of yeah. competitive gaming what is relegation Absolutely. So let's say 10 teams, right, in a league, if you're in the bottom two or three, for example, you get relegated to the B League, and the top three teams from the B League go up to the A League. But with franchising, that's no longer the case for League of Legends. Ah, okay. Reminds me of soccer. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to, I mean, I'm a soccer man, so yeah, I know that, but like, I, I use that a lot. I use that knowledge a lot, but people usually don't get it. Oh, I don't want to talk. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> hey, man, I, I mean, I'm not going to start any trouble. I'm an Arsenal fan, but we're going to keep moving on. Oh, you started trouble already, man. You already started trouble, man. <laughs> hey, hey, all I'm going to say, all I'm going to say is 1-3. Oh, come on, man. <laughs> See, him. there we go. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's too funny. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so, so, so you guys would be the next tier down from your uh, – from the B, from the B League, academy, league, right? Or the academy, yeah, academy league. league. That's what we aspire to be. Yes, that's not what we are now, but that's what we aspire to be. Okay. Especially with recognition that we're getting, the more teams we're getting to join, that's what we do aspire to be. Yes. Okay. And you know what? I just, I just love so far what I'm hearing is offering that open opportunity to get people on the big stage because this is something that me, um, this is something that me and Travis have always discussed is how do you. Is it just pure luck that you break the scene? You know what I mean? Like, how do you get to this level of people knowing about you? Um, I know you can go through the score, the you can go through the leaderboards, but it just yeah. it, we all know it always takes that extra <laughs> something to get you to a in terms that I would understand like a, a Sonic Fo- Sonic Fox yeah. level or so yeah. on and so forth. So you guys <laughs> offer that opportunity for the everyday Joes such as me to get my name out there. Exactly. We do. And going back to what you're saying, it's like, it honestly just was pure luck. Right now, League of Legends is coming into Season 8 of its uh, championship series, the LCS. In Season 1 through 3, I believe, it's literally just pure luck for people to get into the LCS, you know? If you gotta have, like, not only do you gotta be, like, in the top leaderboards, you also gotta have a lot of reputation to get your name out, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but as a Season 4... Um, what I remember doing is they started opening up that challenger series I was telling you. They allowed like you know semi pro teams to become pro teams, and the best thing that Riot has done now to help um, you know get people into the LCS is something they opened up I think season six called uh, Scouting Grounds. What they do is every year with Scouting Grounds they take the top five players of each position on the leaderboards and they put them into these four teams that are monitored by the pro teams, and then from there they select players to draft them into their teams and just oh. recently now just this last draft which is the second well actually this is the first draft that just happened I'm sorry this season seven it's it's literally just like the nba draft if you watch the nba draft they literally had players come on they put on the cap on their team and etc it's literally just like an nba That's draft they played epic. out so it was wow. pretty epic watching it you know it was a historic moment you know it's just like wow man i remember watching this for the nba and now this is coming into esports so it was pretty cool Hey man, I, I firmly believe it was bound to happen. Man. Um, yeah, because no, I I was getting ready to say uh, the reason why I agree with that so much is the fact that esports is has become so popular. Like, and then for me, like I was telling you before we started, I started out watching only Call of Duty, and now that I'm I'm hearing about League of Legends and and other titles like this. Um, uh, my my mind is all over the place now, so you know. With with that being said, does um, NCGA only support title as of right now? Do you guys only support titles like League of Legends? So the reason though we do League of Legends is one, it's already got the reputation, right? True. Okay. If you ask one out of if you ask four people, at least two of them would say, "Oh yeah, I've heard of League of Legends." For the and also like, it's easier in terms of like, people that play League of Legends are most more so interested in becoming competitive because in League of Legends you don't just like make an account and just hop in and start playing with everyone. You got to go through thirty levels of grinding and then finally you can finally play online ranked against other people. Until then, though, you have to play against robots basically. Mm, okay. So it, I think that itself already weeds out like the casual player. So I think that's why it's easier to cater to League of Legends. Um, 
other than that, I'm trying to think, bringing up a, like another game like uh, Call of Duty. The thing about Call of Duty is, I mean, we have done it before. I think we started out with Call of Duty back in 2015. Okay. Um, issue with it is that it's very, very short and very quick. And usually teams don't stick with each other, you know. Team, it's just like mercenaries, you know. Each team uh, is made of mercenaries. Uh, that, you're like that. you're absolutely correct. Um, and then with League of Legends, a team, you know, they'll enter a tournament and they'll lose, but they'll come back again with the same team, and then you know they'll lose again maybe or whatever, but then they'll swap out some players, you know. But the core of it remains the same. Um, I think it's easier to cater with that because then we get a reoccurring. Um, audience basically recurring people that come and enter and, and participate in our tournaments mm. um, we are looking into going into single player uh video games such as hearthstone hearthstone is pretty popular right now it's uh something i've looked into and it looks like a pretty great game i mean i know the game uh, the community and it looks like something that we can work with as well um in addition to that I, I grew up on Call of Duty in my high school years, so I, I, I want to get did. back into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think we all did. I think we all did. <laughs> and I'm trying to work on a model that would uh, be successful for Call of Duty, and I think I'm about to get there. Um, I've been playing, because uh, until this recent one that came out, World War II, I haven't played Call of Duty since Black Ops 1, I think. Wow. We are in the it's, same yeah, boat. It's been a while. You know, I like <laughs> this while. guy. I like yeah. this guy. <laughs> I like you too, man. Um <laughs> But, uh, and like, you know, I've been playing it. I'm like, wow, man, I, I remember how much I'm at this game. I love this game. And so I'm trying to, like, I know there's, there, there's people out there that want to play this competitively at a smaller level. So I'm trying to figure out a good model to that will be successful and carry on the same idea we're trying to implement into League, not only for quality, but also Hearthstone and anything that we do as well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, console gaming is kind of on the back burner for now, pretty much. So the thing about console gaming. Not to be, not to be, not to sound elitist or anything, right? It's it's that it's casual usually. Usually yeah. it's casual, right? Very and, true. And although we do have tournaments, you know, well, I'll have tournaments where you know just a casual person that just wants to you know participate in it. That's fine and all, but you know that's not our main goal, of course. Um, I think the issue of console gaming now is that it's harder because each console already has a uh, how would I say? It's set, you know. Whereas PC, you can. Uh, it's easier to stream on Twitch. It's easier to make layouts. It's easier to do this or that. Uh, it's more. Uh, um, how do you say? Uh, like an open source. Of, basically, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's that's the biggest issue of console gaming. I think the truly only console games that I know that is going on in esports or like in just in other small leagues as well or tournaments is uh, Smash. Mm-hmm. Just because there's such. There's a oh man. There's a big love for Smash, man. You know, the top prize in a big tournament for Smash is literally like the smallest prize in League of Legends. But these guys love, they love their game, man. That's what I love about them. They love their game. They're passionate about this, their game, man. They do anything to have a tournament. You know, they, they go out into their grandma's garage and have a tournament there, man. They, they love the game. And I just, I, I, I actually just witnessed a tournament not too long ago <laughs> over at UC Riverside. And you've seen everybody bring out their old TVs because, you know, of course, if you run at too high a resolution yeah. on, on uh, what were they playing? <laughs> uh, I forgot which Smash they were playing, but, yeah. you know, it ruins the game. So they're running yeah, on them. old slapping yeah. aside TVs yeah. with D- VCR players just to make sure to get the good quality of the game. Yeah, so, man, I know what you're saying. Um, one of my roommates, uh, well, my all my roommates were all gamers, you know, either League of Legends, Smash or something. One of my roommates, uh, Jordy, it's the name. He's a Smash player, and he's actually trying to get you know into the competitive scene here. He's actually the number one, one ranked player in Iowa here. Wow. Um, yeah, and he does participate in the big tournaments. Um, and yeah, he has he has like you said, he has one of those old TVs to play Smash on. You know, it's just not the same if, unless you have one of those. Mm-hmm. And and you know what? Um, th- hearing you describe like some of the problems with console. And um, mm-hmm. just, you know, looking through the Internet, doing different research for this. One thing I've, I've noticed is not only um, is everything set, it's hard to do the competitive side to it. Like how would truly how would you set a bracket for strictly online? How would I pay out? How would I yeah. actually create this tournament? And that's something that yeah. I thought about. And it makes sense why um, anytime I see a console tournament, it's usually either super big are yeah. very small. Yeah, very small, like in the garage or something. Man. Yeah, that's or at a barber but, shop or something like that. I've never seen a mid-tier console tournament. 
it's just like you said, man. You know, there they'll be like, if if there's a PC gamer, you know, he knows how to use his PC, right? So you know how he knows how to check his bracket. He knows how to go to the bracket. He knows how to use PayPal or stuff like that. Console gamers, I don't think there's a PayPal application on Xbox One. Nope. I don't think there's things like that. You know, so that's why it's harder. Um, that's why console players need a computer right next to their console. Yeah, yep. and you know, <laughs> see what they, you know. That's sad. I feel, like that's I feel like that's an inside joke between you two. It, right? Yeah, because that's how my setup is exactly right now. <laughs> I mean, you got to think about it because we we just got into heavy following esports to the tier that it's at now, and yeah. um, us learning about setups and getting setups, getting the proper equipment for setups. That's kind of why I made that joke because yeah. it's the truth. Uh, yeah, it is. I I don't turn my my PlayStation on without before I turn my plate my computer on I turn my computer yeah. on then I turn my PlayStation on <laughs> so yeah you're you're absolutely right there it's so sad my TV is the last thing to come on so I turn on my laptop turn on my monitor then I turn on my Xbox and I get it all set up it, it's just it's so crazy how um because I mean when I was a kid honestly from everybody I remember really talking to that played any type of online games, it was always PC back in the day. I remember going to uh, internet cafes. I yeah. remember, uh, I believe ours was called the Red Dragon. Like, it it was it was awesome. Like, you would go in and anything from Diablo, Diablo 2. Um, I would watch people Age play Quake. Empire. Yeah, oh my God, don't even get me started. Age of Empires, that was life. I, I heard they're remastering it. Dude, I, I, I have that. I have oh. that. that. You got the remaster? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have it on Steam, man. Nah, is is it amazing? <laughs> All right, it's awesome, man. It's awesome. Okay. Yeah, see, we, to be honest, the first time me, me and uh, Baron actually experienced like PC gaming together, they opened up a gaming, like, they opened up a, a gaming facility in a, in a mall, our local mall called Howie's Game Shack, and we went in there and played Ages of Empire for about four or five hours, just sitting man, in there drinking going monsters. Back in. <laughs> and just play it. So, um, yeah, you know, I, I wasn't, I was very naive uh, when it came to PC gaming. And my, I, I'm actually awoken now. I think, uh, you know, PC is the way to go before I would, as of right now, I choose a PC over any console. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I was. And I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. No, I, it's crazy. I was even looking at different prices. I mean, uh-huh. for what people are spending on an Xbox One X. You could have a decent running rig yeah. that'll last you for really a year can. or two. You really can, man. Like, uh, I mean, I grew up on consoles, right? And just until like last year, I was a console gamer. I mean, I, I had a laptop before that, you know, and that's what really got me into PC gaming. But um, before that, I always had consoles. You know, every three, four years, I bought a new one. And if you really count it up, the amount you spend on like two generations of consoles, you can have a really decent PC, set, like a really good one PC. Oh yeah. Uh, set up. <clears throat> You're right about that. Now, um, h- how long does it take a, a a person to 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 consider himself good enough to even attempt to playing competitive competitive League of Legends or any PC in your tournaments? Yeah, I think um, it could be as little as honestly, man, four months. It could be as long as two years. Uh, I've mm-hmm. seen some players. Do you guys know the the what's it called the ranking system in League of Legends at all? No. no. Okay, I'll just tell you real quick. Um, there's so sil- there's bronze. Okay. There's silver. There's gold. There's platinum. There's diamond. There's master, and then finally there's challenger. Fifty percent. Oh, I'm sorry. And and each of those, except for master and challenger, there's five divisions. So, bronze five, bronze four, wow, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up to master. Fifty percent of United, or not even United States, because it's NA, so United States, Canada, and I think some of Mexico. Fifty percent of them are all in, all the way, all bronze, and up to silver. Oh no, sorry, up to gold four, gold wow. three above. That's the other fifty, and then of that fifty, I think there's like forty percent in gold three to gold one. So once you hit like platinum that's when you start getting into the top 10 percent of the country oh wow um, wow and i've seen players go from like a uh, diamond five which i mean it's still like in the top two percent but it's you know it's not the same as challenger or master i've seen people go from diamond five to 
challenger at the very top of the challenger lead, uh, leaderboard in five months. Sometimes it takes people two years, you know. It's wow. um, and it's I don't think it's a lack of like competitive drive either, because like I've seen you know both of those players they have the same drive. I just think that maybe like some of them actually like practice every day. Um, maybe not even just practice every day. They actually change up their routine. They actually look into like exactly like what am I doing wrong? They look at video reviews. What am I doing wrong? You know, they actually listen to podcasts an hour every day to get better. You know, these are like the actual determined people that I know have the potential to become, you know, something. Yeah. And then, you know, once we see that, you know, we, we try to do our best to, you know, help get word out or et cetera, or, you know, get them on the higher level tournaments that we have to get them, you know, to show them how good they actually are so then they can actually, you know, actually believe in themselves and say, hey, you know, I can actually make a run for this. Hmm. Yeah, that, that's crazy that you say that. Uh, I I was watching a um a documentary on uh I forget what team it was, and uh, they they talked about how video on demand, how vods were very important to League of Legends, uh to League of Legends organizations. Like yeah. they breathe that. Like they, it's really a five day, five days, twelve hour a day, uh, thing, and that's that's amazing to hear. That, that's <laughs> This is all new to us. This is why we, yeah. you know, we're all like geeking out about it because yeah. we don't know. Uh, you don't. You don't hear this, right. and then the, and then the, see that that just speaks volumes on the the League of Legends community because you're telling me all I got to do is make it to platinum, and I'll be in the top ten percent. I believe that's what all you right. said, or that I'll be in the ten percent. Yeah, top ten percent. And I still got two more ranks to go. Uh, three more. Well, I mean, technically oh. two, right? But I mean, if you're trying to get on top of challenge, because challenger and master, how they work, they have this thing called LP. Mm -hmm. It's like points, right? It's a point system. Think of it like that. Okay. Master and challenger are technically in the same division. Um, and how it works is, however many people there is in master slash challenger, let's say there's 300, only the top hundred will be in there, and the top hundred is de determined by how many points they have, right? So let's say the number one person has a thousand points, and then the hundredth person has five hundred points. So you have to beat five hundred points to get into Challenger. Mm. It's a little bit confusing at first, but it's always like kind of changing. Yeah. So it's uh, always a new average being created. Yeah, yeah. So when you're, I mean, technically, you know, you can say, oh yeah, plat is high elo, right? Because it's in the top fifty percent. Which I mean, statistically speaking, it's true. But most League of Legends players don't consider yourself to actually be you know, top tier until you hit diamond four, which is, I think, the 1%. That's the 1%. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutal. Hey, you know you know what I love, Eduardo? I'm going to be honest. I yeah. love just knowing that you're the director of the NCGA, how important um, not being a, a casual is to you. Like, cause yeah. you know, and how, how serious your organization, cause I'm assuming clearly you represent your organization. Right. So that, I like that because there's, we, there's other things for casuals. There's, um, LFG, there's just g regular playing. This is something yeah. special, you know, and I, I really, I truly respect that. It actually, it actually adds to the, um, it helps to further push gaming and pushing it into esports and it being what it is a sport and yeah i'm truly passionate about them and like every day since i became not even since i since i joined nc not even the esports direct every day i listen to at least one through four or five podcasts about esports about news about esports about league of legends etc even other games now I'm just literally trying to learn as much as I can about everything because, like, as you said, I really am passionate about this. I want to be knowledgeable about it, too. I don't want to seem like I don't know what I'm talking about. True. So I really am invested in this. Um, there was a point where, I mean, I'm going to school full-time. I was working full-time in another job and working on this about 20, 30 hours. So, like, I would stay up to, like, 2, 3 a.m., wake up at 6 a.m. and do that for, like, a couple months. And it was, it was insane, but, you know, I was driven. Man, and you know what? You, I mean, hearing from what you said about even with just League of Legends and how people would um, anywhere from two to two months to two years, so or four months to two years. So hearing how far you've come in just one year, and just you being a director of the National College Gaming Association, and um, 
and just hearing your passion, I, I truly believe it and I can I can feel it. You know, and I can see it in your works and your guys' page your social media pages. And it's mm-hmm. it's it's amazing. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I can feel it too, you know. I mean I better be feeling it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I hope no, if man. anybody's feeling it, you are. <laughs> no, man, I I really am you know, it's actually something that like I never thought you know, I've always loved video games, but I never thought I would actually be here because like my major um, is animation, so like I didn't okay. think I'd have anything to do with video games. Um, but you know, just the opportunity came, and usually what I've seen is other people in like similar positions, like presidents of university, of League of Legends clubs, etc. Sometimes they get burnt out, and they, they literally not only do they get tired of being in that position, they just hate the game at that point. Mm. You know, they stop playing the game. I've seen that happen numerous times, and you know, I thought I was gonna get to that point, but it's really never gotten to me there because like. Something about League of Legends is the community can be really toxic sometimes, you know, um, like literally one out of every three or even sometimes two games, you'll have someone in chat tell you, go kill yourself or something like that. Mm. And sometimes that same behavior is seen in the players, just like just in communicating, not even communicating in game, just communicating, you know, I've seen that like in the way they, you know, talk to other people in the tournament, the players, etc. You know, that's a bad side of League of Legends, but. Are there rules in place to? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There is because I just, I just don't want to see it in any, any of that in any of our tournaments. It's not fun for yeah. us. It's not fun for our other players. Okay. Yeah, it's great that you, you know, that that you guys do that. That because uh, we see online bullying and things like yeah. that all the time. So to to see that you guys have put something in place to to try to negate that. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna get it, but to to slow it down and to to yeah. shed light that hey, we won't tolerate that it is is an amazing thing that that you guys are doing over there. Yeah, so I guess um, you know, as uh, looking at NC NCGA, uh, if you don't mind, who are the actual creators of it? Uh, yeah. Are, are you a part of that or? No, actually, I like I said, I joined. Tech, okay, I'll just give you the exact time frame. I joined February of this year, twenty seventeen. Okay. NCGA started in, I think it was August of 2015. Uh, the CEO, um, Connor, Robert, um, he founded it in uh, 2015. And basically, um, it started as a local LAN, you know, tournament organizer. Um, you know, and then he turned it into uh, going to like uh, Kansas City, I remember, for a big Call of Duty tournament and Halo tournament with like, I think, of 100, 200 players. Oh, wow. Um, but the issue with it before is that it, you know, it was just like every two months or so, you know, we had to, you know, get things organized and stuff to, you know, get the, the CD and the spacing, the PCs and the, everything available. Um, but you know, it's been steadily going up like monthly trends and all that, um, you know, even up to now. And then when I joined, uh, you know, like I said, I went to an NCGA tournament for League of Legends here in Iowa City. It was a local land one, and you know, I loved it. And I talked to Connor um, because I was interested in doing something like that. Um, and, um, you know, I hopped on. I became just, like, you know, a small-time guy. You know, I helped a little bit with, like, tournament set up, you know, getting, making sure the PCs are in the right places and stuff like that. And then, you know, the more we talked, you know, I told him about my vision and my dreams for, like, you know, esports. And then, you know, we found out that we both clicked and had the same vision. And then he promoted me to, like, uh, the head of League of Legends, then, you know, the head of um, um, tournament organizing, and then to now to the esports director. Mm. Okay, so there's growth day, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Love hearing and people's like journey. To, yeah, and you know, I'd like to say, you know, um the work that me and Connor have done together as a, you know, as partners is that uh since February, we've and to now we've blown up, I'd say a big time. We've blown up big time like our Discord only had like 20 play, 20 30 people, and now it has about 380 people in it. Um we've had a I'd say about 18 tournaments in that, what, seven, no, what is it, like nine month span? Wow. Um, yeah, we have had about 18 tournaments in a nine month span. Um, a lot of them being online. Some, and now we're even doing two tournaments a month now. Um, and, you know, as long as we keep growing, as long as there's interest, um, we'd like to keep increasing that number, you know. Our dream is to honestly have, like, a tournament in each state. And then, you know, eventually leading up to, like, some big, super massive tournament. Nice. Okay. 
Okay, so you guys would become your own uh, a premier league of your of your own, pretty much. Yep. There you okay. go. Now, okay. Now I want to take it back to its roots because you know at, we're adventures of the black we're the adventures of the black nerds, yeah. and for us, um, this was for me at least. I know it was something kind of strange. My family always knew I was a big time nerd, always into yeah. gaming comic books uh-huh. graphic whatever you take it there i've been there so how um how has your family if you don't mind me asking or how has the support been for you going down this path at the beginning my first of all i'd like to say my sister is the most supportive person that i've ever known she's uh she's my older sister she's about nine years older than me um, and she's literally like because my parents are divorced and she's been helping taking care of me since i was like Twelve, literally, and to this day, like you know, until I moved out for college, like she's literally been watching um, over me, and you know, always has been supportive whenever I want, whatever I wanted to do, you know. Um, so she has always been supportive from day one. Um, second person is my brother Alex. He's actually plays League of Legends, and he wants to become a pro in that. You know, that's one of the reasons why I wanted to create this bridgeway, you know, for him as well, because you know, okay. Um, I I love the guy. You know, as my little brother, I gotta watch over him and you know this is his big dream so I'm trying to make that bridge away for him um, now for my mom and dad they took a while to get into it um, because you know just as you said you know the parents were like oh video games aren't really any good they're not really going to get you anywhere and all that but um, once they started seeing pictures on Facebook of me being at tournaments seeing how much attention I got and all that then they started uh, you know, really supporting me you know um, of course, it's not all the way there yet, but, you know, they definitely have started showing me more support than, you know, it was at the beginning. Um, in terms of, like, my family background, my sister, uh, my older sister, Myra, and my little brother, Alex, they both play video games. They both play League of Legends. Okay. Um, they, uh, even my little niece, uh, Lily, she plays League of Legends. She's uh, uh, 12. And my uh, brother-in-law, you know, my sister's future husband, plays League of Legends as well. And before that... He, he came in. He saw we all love League of Legends. He started getting into it. Now he loves it. He's a, he's he's crazy about it. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it's my family knows League of Legends. You know, even my mom and dad. You know, they don't they don't play it, but they know it. You know, because they've seen us on the tournaments online on Twitch streams. My dad has come to some of the local land tournaments. You know, so like the support is really there now. Nice, you know? nice. And and the, that man, that's beautiful. And the reason I ask is because. I um one thing I've noticed in the gaming community um on the esports level is um when it comes to games that are outside of uh, and me and Travis actually talked about this outside of fighting games mm-hmm. you rarely see that many black people <laughs> like you you really don't see that many um and one one major reason is what we talked about earlier the difference between console gaming and PC gaming and mm-hmm. um I actually recently asked my mom, I said, mom, now let's, let's take it back. You know, me being 26, I was like, okay, 10 years ago, would you have given me 800 bucks to go buy a graphics card? No. And she just (laughs) looked at, like, she looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, or, or would you have given me $150 to go compete in some tournament that's going to take all weekend? Yeah, and she just looked at me like I was nuts, and I was like, "Okay." <laughs> so uh, it's it's so funny to me, and that's um, and it, it's a it would be a similar situation coming from my background that to fully get everybody on board at a younger age, I would have needed they would have had to see my success first, and yeah. then realize that oh, okay, this is real. This is <laughs> yeah, I I can I can definitely I would definitely agree with that because. Yeah. Until they see, until until your parents or your, you know, or your guardian, whoever is that, that's taking every see that there is potential for growth in it, they're probably not going to, you know, approve of it instantly. Yeah, and that's pretty much the story. Yeah, that's the story you hear when um, you have people talking. The people go and they they tell like how they got into it and what made them start. That is the story that you hear. So yeah, you're. You're right about that, and it's great that your family all, you know, that you guys all do that thing, this thing together, you know, and and that they they understand they, uh, they do understand the growth in it. Yeah, I I just think I don't know. It, um, the way of I became, you know, myself is that it's. I think it's always usually been that you know I I had to show that I could 
have potential in something and then my parents you know started supporting me because even in like soccer like my freshman year you know like I told my dad you know like oh I really love this sport and all that like, you know to play it and at the time I was like a fat chubby kid you know so I couldn't I wasn't I was slow couldn't really touch the ball or anything and you know he's like oh yeah yeah you know like you know like that basic you know yeah. support right not, not that not that develop you know that, that like oh I know you can do it you know we're gonna go train right now yeah kind of and by my senior year well it was actually my junior year of high school mm-hmm. I lost about like 70 pounds I became really fat I became the second fastest runner on the team and you know I, start, I started showing them that you know I, I actually love this you know I, I love this sport you know it means a lot to me and I'm, I'm willing to work hard for it and then that's when my mom and dad started coming to watch my games and all that um, and I think it's the same for this you know it's just that I really showed them my passion and how much time and energy I put into it you know that's and that catch you know that catches their eyes and they see you know this really means something to them you know we got to support them yeah yeah well uh, that that that's great to hear and it, it kind of ties into our you know the the one of the main topics that we we wanted to to jump into is that um or well for example B brought up the FGC which is the fighting game community and um when we when we see these tournaments and we see these people competing um we we can see uh it's a little it's diverse the diversity in the in in this specific community. Yeah. Now, uh, my question to you is: uh, with titles, I mean, we've pretty much been speaking about League of Legends. Yeah. Uh, do you believe that there is a diversity problem inside the that community? I'm just gonna tell you right off the bat: the people I know that I play League of Legends with, I have two Indian friends, I have three black friends, I have. Like four white friends, and I have like three Mexican friends. So I mean, I I honestly don't okay. see the divide at all. Like I actually uh-huh. feel like just a mixture of people. I mean, and you know, honest, me personally, like I don't see people for their race. I just see people, you know. True. Sure. So, I mean, for me, it's never me personally. You know, it's it's never been an issue. Um, and I've, I mean, even like the pre-made teams that I've seen at local land tournaments or online tournaments, it's just just a multi-ethnic uh, team, you know. It's yeah. Like, I've never really just seen like. And all well, okay. I am gonna stop here because something about League of Legends is that it's it's like a joke, right? Koreans are the best, you know. Uh, and then sometimes, gotcha. sometimes in the local lantern, there is an all Korean team, you know. And it's I don't think it's that they choose it to be that way. It's just that most of the time it's that you don't communicate well in English, so you know they're gonna be obviously with someone that speaks their language. Yes. So, um, but I don't think it's something that they personally choose to do, you know. Yeah, okay. and, you, and you know, with any game or any sport, you always gotta do what's best for your team. So if yeah. that's the one way you guys communicate, why it only makes sense. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, because we we. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, B. No, and um, my my point, my the reason why it was such an important point for us is because this is something that's all inclusive, and we want to show that gaming is all inclusive it's open to everybody you know everybody can pick up a controller or a keyboard you know mm-hmm. and of course if finance is permitted and you can really get out there and make a name for yourself it's it's yeah. truly is the new seg it's the new way you can go pro you can feed yourself you know you can truly you're not wasting your time kids yeah, <laughs> like, yeah there you go that's 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 the biggest thing like if if that could be your motto, that would be our motto. Don't you're not wasting your time, kids. Yep, mm-hmm. that, that would be our motto right there. Yeah, because we, we you know when you say that uh, it, it when I started looking into and and we were we're using League of Legends as the example. It's the official example until we're done. But um, when I started paying attention to League of Legends, um, I, I'm looking on the grand scale, so I don't get to uh-huh. see. You know the smaller events and the um, the events that's like close by. I'm looking at pretty much superstars. Like these guys are superstars. You know they're on the, they're in a whole different tier of of competition. Uh, we we just talked about how what it took to get to just the ten percent of it, but these people are pretty much beyond that. Now, yeah. uh, you, you know, we, this is why the, the topic came up, because it was very, like, dominant. It, it was one culture, from what we've seen, pretty much dominated the game. And this is why, like, the, it, it was such a con- – not a, not really a concern, because we do understand it as gamers. People f- have their game. 
Like you're going to game, you know, where your friends are. If your friends is playing a game and you like it, it is. So when we bring up the diversity question and we, we do discuss it, um, you know, we're, we're trying to, like I said, like he, like B said, be that medium. So what would, what is a, for someone looking at this interview and looking at the grand scale of thing, what would be the, the, the gap? What would be the the bridge to say, oh, you know, you can play this too? Is it just to pick up and play? What would that be your recommendation? Just to pick up and play games, or no, just in terms of League of Legends, League of Legends, League of Legends, League of Legends. Like specifically? Yeah, like what? Um, basically, where where's the starting point? Like, should people should you have some intro to it, or should you just dive in and get your hands dirty? I think it depends on the person, you know, I mean, mm. you tell someone that, you know, to, for anything, you tell someone to go run a mile, if there's someone interested in actual et cetera, they'll do it. You tell someone that's not at all, they're not going to do it. True. Yeah, you're um, right about that. I think if there's a passion, if there's a desire, no matter where you are, if you're willing to put in the time and work for it, then yeah, you know, that, that's that's the same for absolutely anything. Uh, then for sure, you know, if, if you're willing, if you have a desire, even a, an interest in this, then yeah, you, you can absolutely make something out of it. Now, the biggest thing as with anything, I'm not gonna tell you it's gonna be quick. It's not gonna be a day, it's not gonna be a week, it's not gonna be a month, it's not gonna be three months, it's not gonna, you may maybe not even be a year, maybe not even two, but it's something you just gotta keep grinding on, you know, it, it, and it's the same for everything. You know, you gotta have that grinder mentality for it. Um, which I think if you have a passion for it or interest for it, you are gonna have, it's just something that's inside you. It's not something that you just choose, it's just something that lives inside you. So, I mean, yeah, I would say that, you know, just go ahead and start playing, you know. Pick you know the, what? The, the key. I, I'm, I'm really feeling that Eduardo needs to do uh, <laughs> positive speaking. <laughs> uh, that's that's what I'm getting right now. That, that's what my brother always tells me. I'm always, like, telling him these things. Because, you know, he dreams of, like, being a pro in a League of Legends, you know. You know I'm a, I always have to have, like, some words of encouragement or motivation for him. Or um, sometimes for my team in soccer. Or sometimes even because I used to be the captain of a... A team we had for like League of Legends tournaments, and you know, had to do the same thing even if we lost or if we won. Had to make sure our heads didn't get too big and etc. You know. So so you, yeah you so you've been on both sides of the coin as for competing and on the actual business side of of a a, a, a full on tournament. Yeah, yeah I have. I've been uh like, I mean the thing going deeper into that you know I've I've been in traditional sports and esports you know and. I, I think that the same love I have for soccer is the same love I have for League of Legends. You know, I don't see it differently. It's That's insane, great. You know? That is amazing. And uh, I'm convinced that uh, my PC I will be getting in a few months here. Uh, I'm going to play League of Legends, man. <laughs> yeah, man. You, you know what? Yes, I'm I'm going to dive in because I just hearing the passion behind it and then seeing the community behind it, it's, it's something that... Um, I mean, and it's a new video game. Like, it'd be new for me. Yeah. Like, <laughs> plain and simple, I'm, I'm always down to try it. Like, why not? Um, can't call myself a gamer and not willing to try something. Yeah, maybe Eduardo can carry us. Yeah, there you go. Nah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> man. Yeah, I'm a little bit about that. You know, I have to do all of this, and I also, I also have to make sure I'm not bad at the game. I have to actually <laughs> play the game, you know. It's a lot of time commitment, um, but... Uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I've been able to do everything that I've been able to do. That's Even great. as small as, you know, just playing League of Legends and getting to a decent rank. There you go. There you go. Well, you know what? Um, we want people to really continue the conversation, and we want people to actually really get involved with the National College Gaming Association and to help this get to where it, where it should be and where it will be, to help it get there faster. So, Eduardo, go ahead and um, share out your guys' social media and all that other good stuff. Yeah, man. Um, some of our social media, I'm not gonna lie, it's a pretty weird link. It's not as simple, unfortunately, because uh, <laughs> there's a uh, NCGA. The most oh. prevalent thing is a uh, no. Well, like maybe that too, but it, the other thing here is the National Corn Growers Association. <laughs> oh, so, oh wow, <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. So honestly, I don't know how. I mean, like, uh, if this is gonna be like on the YouTube. We yeah, we're gonna make sure to add all the links for everything. Yeah. We'll um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, for sure, you know, all, all your gamers out there, uh, you guys know what's Discord. Get in our Discord. Uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, follow us on Twitter. 
there you go. And you know what, man? We really want to, um, we're really thankful that you took this time out of your super busy schedule to come and do this interview with us. And, um, and I'm just thankful again for all the people out there listening. And I truly, I'm just seriously, I'm thankful. Um, and I mean, we getting ready to close it off. I just got to say, once again, I'm Baron J67. I'm XT Jones. And I'm Eduardo Hernandez, the sports director for NCGA. Man, thank you guys. And we are Thanks, out. Some feathers are burning, bump for the setup, a pat and pimp for the letter, or manifest for the best I can do is make best the effort with torture. Worst case scenario, leave nobody for burial. My phone rang. One six, you take it forever. These body parts can get severed without the heat in my shed. I'm coming. Only your German cars came with chopper propellers. Don't cut a limb till I'm.